So here's a note to self. Most of you have probably seen my construction on the, the permanent drain I made for this thing. And I found a modification that needs to be done. I'm gonna share that with you. So this is my 75 gallon tank. And a while back I made this modification to the tank. I was watching uh, Adrian's fish room and he made this thing called a permanent drain line for a, a friend of his uh, on their aquarium. And so I thought, well, you know, that's a good idea. I'm gonna do the same thing. And what it entails is a pickup at this end. And I put a, a screen from an airless paint sprayer there so that, cause I was trying to get shrimp going in here. I don't want anything getting sucked out, small fish, whatever. Uh, so I put that screen here and there's other things you can use. I think he had a plastic, some sort of plastic screen that he had found and I, I don't know where those come from. So this is what worked for me. And it's half inch hose threads. So all I needed was a hose fitting uh, the bottom part here is, is hose fitting, <coughs> excuse me, ho uh, female hose fitting, because this is male hose fitting. And this part is just PVC glue fitting, a slip fitting is what it's called. And, and it ran it up and uh, elbowed it down and around and over and forward out to this area. And then it goes over here and all that does is allows it to butt up against the, uh, the steel post from this shelf and it tees here. And then it goes this way into the valve that I can shut it off, all right? And then keeps going this way all the way across to another, just an end that I can that allows me to uh, hold it up against this side of the shelf. And then in that T goes down into another uh, hose fitting. And the other one in the tank is all PVC. This one is a brass hose fitting. So, uh, this is a, a male adapter, uh, PVC male adapter that's uh, glue fitting, a slip fitting, two male threads, and it goes into the female uh, pipe threads into a female hose thread, and that's just the, the male end of a garden hose that's, that goes up into this. And when I'm done with it, I take it apart. So it's fully charged all the time. And what that means, this valve, what I did originally was hook up the garden hose, turn the water on, open this valve, and it put water in this whole pipe, and water started coming out here. And when water started coming out here, I shut this off. And that means from this valve all the way to this point, there's water in it, okay? So when I wanna do a, a, a change, what I do is hook up the garden hose, run it outside somewhere, because we're in the garage, and open this valve. Now, when this valve is closed, it's perpendicular to the pipe, okay? And open all the way would be parallel to the pipe, and it flows really fast. In fact, if we just watched it for a minute, I'll put my finger there, uh, we can, you know, we can watch and, and you'll see it go down lower and lower and lower, so it moves pretty quick. So what I do is just sort of throttle it where I want it, right about there, in conjunction with this uh, filler rig that I built. Same stuff, I put, I put another airless uh, uh, screen on that, uh, mostly just as a water diffuser. Uh, I've got another one I built and I put a 90 degree fitting on it and I probably should use that instead. I like that better actually. I was using this for a drain for my other tanks uh, to, keep, to keep fish from, or, or shrimp a lot, to keep them from being sucked out or, or fry. Uh, and it comes out, same thing, throttle it here. Now when I'm draining the tank, this is wide open. Right now I'm filling the tank. So water's coming in at this end and all that smoke is just oxygenation. Uh, you see all the bubbles coming out there because because I've got the pressure probably a little too high right now. And uh, uh, I've got the valve throttled back. If it was full open, it, remember it would be parallel with, uh, with the pipe, full closed, perpendicular to the pipe, all right? So water, it's pushing ideally stuff I let this tank go. I had a really bad brown algae outbreak. Uh, I went looking for Auto Sinkless at uh, the local PetSmart the other day, and uh, they said uh, they might, might not be carrying them anymore, so I'm gonna have to go elsewhere. Hopefully, uh, my local fish shop over here, Coachella Valley Aquatics, and I haven't been there in far too long. Hopefully, he's got some, because I want to put about six or eight in this tank. Maybe they'll spawn for me, you know, in a year or so. Um, but anyway, those are the bronze quarries that you saw uh, cruising around. I think you probably saw them. Uh, there's, 
uh, seven or eight of them in here, and they go nuts, and they've spawned in the past, left their eggs on the glass, so I just cleaned all the glass off. Now there's one of them right there. Uh, so what I do right now, and I just clean the filter, uh, the filter floss, and I've got a pre-filter sponge on that. And uh, there's a pair of koi angels in here, and I really need to get some more. I'd like to get, I don't know, six or eight, or uh, probably a, a colony of maybe eight. Uh, so maybe they'll start spawning for me. A um, piece of manzanita wood, a couple pieces of manzanita wood, bunch of crypts. Uh, this bulb that I cannot remember the name of, I'll put it up because I know where it is, so I'll put it up when I when I uh, edit this. And uh, I'm going to let this run for a little bit and flush some of the water out, and then I'll dechlor it. Um, and I don't think my angelfish like this too much. Uh, the last... If I let it run too long, I'll see them up close to the surface like they're gasping. So I don't know if it's a function of the water, the chlorine, chloramines in the water, or if it's just uh, the, too much oxygenation. I know that's supposed to be a bad thing with discus, but for different reasons. I guess with discus, too much oxygenation will uh, remove their slime off of their off their sides. And that, from what I understand, that'll kill them. Uh, shouldn't be a problem with the angels. Anyway, <laughs> side note. Uh, so I'm going to let this run for a bit, and then I'm going to shut it off. But we'll go back to that side note, that note to self thing. This is where the uh, uh, permanent drain comes in. And what I came across when I was trying to clean back here, it's just too damn close to uh, the side of the glass. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, cut this PVC right in the middle, or you know, somewhere close, and extend it closer to the filter. Push the whole thing uh, from here over that way, closer to the filter. And then I'll put a coupling in, uh, pro two, two couplings, I guess, and a, a short piece of pipe. And if the couplings are just too close together, what I might end up doing is just, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe just like rebuild this, this whole thing. Uh, this whole end of it from, from here out. I don't know, I don't want to have to do that. Cause that means I'll have to go, but nah, I could put a coupling here. And then it, all of a sudden it starts looking like a mess with too many couplings. I'd rather, I'll see if I can just get a coupling down here, maybe push it over a couple inches uh, to about here. And that way I can get behind it easy enough. There's enough room to get behind it with a sponge or a scraper, um, but there's just no room on the side here. It's just way too tight. Should have thought of that. And that's, you know, this is where uh, good design comes in. Uh, work it out, sketch it out before you glue everything up. Yeah, that's the note to sell. So anyway, I'll post a video on how I built that permanent drain line. Somewhere, you know, how that goes. Uh, one of the corners of, uh, of uh, the end screen. And I'll, I'll put a link, if I remember, also in the, uh, in the descriptions. And we'll... Uh, See y'all next time, and as always, thanks for watching.